we will continue from the football. <laughs> but now I will ask questions. So get ready to answer the questions. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reciting the whole Quran in Ramadan and it is coming to the air of the Prophet We know that it is Allah who is reciting because of the verse of the Quran. Tell me which surah? For either when we have recited this Quran, Quran, you must follow that way of recitation. Which surah? I just said it. I just said it. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe you didn't have your makana. <laughs> surah to Qiyamah. Yeah. You don't remember. I just said it. When I have recited this Quran, you must follow that way of recitation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we said, well, if he's reciting the whole Quran in Ramadan, then Nabi Muhammad yes. Yes. is listening. <coughs> And he's hearing verses of the Quran for the first time. It has not come down as yet as Waki. Because it will take how many years to come down? 23 years. 23 years, I think. Um, for us, we probably should serve Makan first. <laughs> They're not answering me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's hearing verses of the Quran for the first time. He never heard it before. It has not come as yet as what he. That is why he's trying to memorize quickly, quickly, quickly. And Allah says, no, don't do that. لا تحرك لسانك لتعجل به. Do not hasten your tongue to recite <coughs> this <coughs> Quran. إن علينا جمعه. We are the ones who will bring all the parts together, make a whole. What Quran and we will recite the whole Quran to you. And then when uh, uh, Imam Hasbullah recited uh, in the Salat, he recited from Surah to Taha. And in Surah to Taha he recited an ayah. Where Allah says the same thing. Wala ta'ajal. With Quran. Do not hasten with the Quran. Min Kabl Min Kabli Yuk Da Ilaika Wahi. Wait until the Wahi has come down, the whole Quran in twenty-three years, and then you will memorize the whole Quran. So you cannot <coughs> memorize the Quran, O Muhammad, والسلام, until the whole Quran has come down as <coughs> Wahi. But he's <coughs> listening to the whole Quran in Ramadan. He's listening to the whole Quran in Ramadan. So how do we solve this problem? <laughs> huh? Allah says in Surah to uh, which Surah is this? Um, Sanukriyoka? 
Shura to the Ada, yes. Sanukri, okay. We are going to teach you to recite this Quran. Sanukri, okay. Fala tensa. And when we teach you to recite this Quran, you will not forget. Illa. Masha Allah. Except what we want you to forget. Now then, if you answer this question, you're going to get Makan. Do answer no <laughs> Question. You will not forget except that which we want you to forget. Shanukriuka Falatansa. We're going to teach you to recite this Quran, and when we teach you, you will not forget Illa Masha Allah, except that which we want you to forget. Come on, somebody tell me. Come on, somebody tell me what it is that Allah wants him to forget from the Quran. Do you understand the question? No? Do you understand the question? Do you understand the question? No, maybe one more, sir. Yes, what is it? Maybe one more. Can you get it for us? Uh, Excuse me. Repeat it one more time. Okay. Yeah, more question. More information. What I want <laughs> to you to not forget. The Prophet is receiving the Quran as Wahi to the heart. But it will take 23 years. Yeah, it takes 23 years. And Allah is saying you will not memorize the whole Quran until this Wahi is completed. So it takes 23 years. Good. But every Ramadan he's hearing the whole Quran. Every Ramadan. And he wants to memorize it and Allah is telling him, stop. Don't move your tongue so quickly to memorize it. And then in Surah to Ala, Allah says, listen carefully, I'm not going to repeat it one more time. Sanukri <laughs> Oka. We are going to teach you how to recite this Quran. Falar Tansa. And when we teach you, you will not forget the Quran. Illa Masha Allah. Except that which we want you to forget. So, what is that portion of the Quran that Allah has taught him and then Allah wants him to forget? That's the question. You answer, you get Makran, and no answer. No. <laughs> I think Allah said, may I try to uh, answer? Uh, I think Allah uh, asked Muhammad not to be hurry, trying to remember the whole Quran in one or two or three Ramadan, mm -hmm. because it takes 23 years. Okay. So be patient and be patient. Okay. Uh, Anybody else? Excuse me. Yes. Hidayah. You have to speak loud because I can't hear the whole man. I guess it's uh, because Hidayah. Because of Hidayah. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, me. Allah said in the Surah Al-Ala and Surah al we must read every day. We must hear every day. Not only in Salah, not only in yeah. Yeah. Ramadan, but every day. Right. Okay. 
I'm not going to repeat the question. Okay. The answer is that that part of the Quran which Allah is reciting in Ramadan, which has not as yet come down as what he after Allah has recited it to him, then Allah removes it from his memory. <laughs> so he doesn't remember it. So the next year when Ramadan comes, and Allah is reciting the Quran to him, it will be as though he's saying it for the first time. <laughs> because Allah has removed it memory. from his memory. Sanukriuka. I'm going to teach you to recite this Quran. And when I teach you, you will not forget. Illa mashallah. Except that which I want you to forget. Good. So now then, he's hearing the whole Quran in Ramadan. So Allah will have the first Jews for the first night and the second Jews for the second night. But Allah has already divided the Quran. Alright? Quran and Farak now. We have already divided this Quran, meaning in surahs. For the purpose of recitation. Mm -hmm. So the first surah is, of course, Al Fatiha. In Bahasa Kunji? Kunji. 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 You cannot recite the Quran without Kunji. So then, this is the Kunji. So on the first night, Surah al Fatiha and the whole of Surah al Baqarah. We ask the question Allah is dividing the Quran into Surahs. So why did he put the longest surah of all at the beginning? Why? Answer? <coughs> Answer? Uh, why did he put the longest surah of all at the beginning? Why? Come on, Rio. <laughs> Rio, Rio. Kenapa di awalnya Quran itu ayat-ayat itu panjang? Di awalnya surah Al-Baqarah itu panjang. Ayat-ayat pendek kan sudah kami masuk belakangan. Maybe because this is early mom, so you still have the energy to do that. You yes? Because it's can easy starting. Surah is because. Why did he put the longest surah at the beginning? Why? Because easy to read. What is it? Easy to start it. Huh? Easy to start. No. When uh, you start to form the, the big he one. the longest surah at the beginning to test you. Huh? To test you. Yes. So, so from the. When you beginning. recite the whole surah on the first day, or when you recite part? Mm -hmm. The whole surah. Yeah. There's a second reason why. All the long surahs are at the beginning. And at the end of the, surah, the Quran, short surahs. Tell me why. Um, yeah. Maybe I can uh, continue from him. Um, when we start from the big one, uh, so we get the tip in the after. Yeah. We did? When we start from the B, 
He's sleeping, crash is sleeping. I wish yes. I wish the ambassador was yesterday. Yeah. I would, love to, I would love to have the ambassador sitting here. The answer is, Allah wants us to recite the Quran with the moon. So that we learn to live with the moon. Tell me in Bahasa how you say, live with the moon. Hidup dengan bulan. Huh? Hidup dengan bulan. Hidup, live, hidup, 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 live, ah, with the moon, bulan, hidup dengan bulan, hidup dengan bulan, live with the moon. So when the moon is young, Allah wants us to be strong. So he gives us the long surahs at the beginning of the month. And when the moon is old and we are tired, <laughs> he gives us the short the easy one, the easy short surahs. So that when we recite the Quran with the moon, we will eventually live with the moon. Okay? And the people who live with the moon, they will never experience something that our prophet said would happen. Let me tell you what our prophet said. He said that in the end time, <clears throat> time will move faster and yet faster. A whole year will pass like, like, flash, like a month. A whole year will pass and it would appear like to be only a month. And a whole month will pass like a week. And a whole week will pass like a day. And a whole day will pass like an hour, and a whole hour will pass like the amount of time it takes to kindle a fire. You never heard this prophecy? Rio? Rio, answer me. Not yet. You never heard it? First time. First time. I think it was too much time. Time goes by. Time is very limited. I'm, I'm surprised. Tell me, put your hands up if you ever heard this hadith before. Put your hands up. Only two. All right, well, the, the, the people of Indonesia have some homework to do. Yeah. Whenever you experience time moving faster, this is proof. You are not living with the moon anymore. <laughs> and Allah gave us the moon. And He gave us night and day and He tells us in the Quran. He says, I've given you the moon. The stages of growth and decline of the moon. And I've given you night and day. I've given you the moon and night and day for you to count the years and measure time. And all of us have abandoned the moon now. All. <laughs> because what happened was, I'll tell you a secret. I don't know if you know it. What the Jal did what the Jal? was to take the solar year, which is divided into seasons. 
in Indonesia you don't have winter two seasons. You have only two seasons. Yeah. But here in, 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 in Moscow you have four seasons. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. And in the Quran, Rehlata Shita was life. Remember? Leila fi Quraysh. Leila fi him. Rehlata Shita was safe. Summer and winter, the caravan. So the solar year is divided into seasons. And the lunar year is divided into months. And Allah says in the Quran, the months are 12 in number. So you start from one, and when you read again from one, meaning a year is comprised of 12 months. So Dajjal could not shake this, so he stayed with the 12 months. But he said, I'm going to take the solar year and I'm going to divide it into 12. Mm. Yes. You have to have PhD in mathematics to do that. <laughs> yeah. So now the solar year is longer than the lunar year. Mm. Because when they went to sleep in the cave, Surat al you say Surah to Kafi. <laughs> when they went to sleep in the cave, that wall had abandoned Islam, abandoned the truth. So that wall said they slept for 300 years. Was da'adu tis'a. But those who have faith in Allah, they added nine. Was that with this arm? Surah, you know this? Yeah. You don't recite Surah to Kafi? Yeah. Yeah. Well, shake your head. Seven <laughs> years. <laughs> they, they, they slept in the cave for 300 years. Was that with this arm? And they added nine. So 300 solar years is 309 lunar years. A solar year has about 11 days more, about 11, than the lunar year. So to divide now the solar year, who was dividing it? It was the West, the Western Christian world. So then we said, they said, some months we have to give 31 days. And some months we give 30 days. So which months you will give 31? It was their Christian calendar that determined for them, well, Easter have to have so many days. You see? So they'll put six, 31 days in this month because of their Christian feast. And we follow it. We accept it. Mm -hmm. Like sheep See? and cattle <laughs> and goats <laughs> and camels who have no capacity to think. Yeah. I think if I have my Sokarno was here, <laughs> I think he would love this lecture. <laughs> because Ahmad Sokhano could think, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. And so, when they divided the solar year, and they gave some months 31 days, mm -hmm. and some months 30 days, they still could not solve the problem. So then what they did was, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, they said that when the month of February come, that every fourth year, February will have 29 days. 
this year. Yeah. Otherwise, February has a 28 days. Today is what day? Today is February what? Today is February 29th? Yesterday. 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 And when you abandon Allah's calendar and you accept this bogus calendar, then you will pay the price. That you will perceive time moving faster. I lecture extensively in different parts of the world. I was in a mosque in Britain. I said, all those who experience time moving fast. Fast, uh, fast, put your hands up. Everybody in the masjid put their hands up. Everybody. Imam was sitting next to me, but Imam didn't have his hand up. So I was about to turn to Imam to congratulate him that he is not but I don't and the arm put it on a So today, everybody in the whole world experiencing time moving faster and faster. Why? You have abandoned the moon. You no longer live with the moon. But people living in Kampung, they still live with the moon. Go in Kampung, you see. People in Kampung, they never say, I'm moving faster. No. And so, the long surahs in the Quran are meant to tell you, you must make yourself strong in the beginning of the month. And when the month is old and you are tired, he gives you this short <coughs> Now then we turn. We go back to the Qutbah. So on the first day of Ramadan, Surah Tudvatya, Surah Tudvatya, second day, Surah Tudvatya, Surah Ali Imran, third day, Surah Tudvatya, Surah Tudnisa, fourth day, Surah Tudvatya, Surah Tudnisa, Maida, fifth day, Surat al Fatiha, Surat al Adam, sixth day, sixth day, Surat al Fatiha, Surat al Araf. Now, wait, hold it. Allah says in the Quran, seven times he repeated in the Quran, that he created the heavens and the earth in how many days? Six days. الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام six days ثم استوى على العرش but in the Torah it says something else that he created the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh day he rested <laughs> <laughs> this is in the Torah. <laughs> On the seventh day, he rested. <laughs> so, in the Sharia, which came down to Musa, they were asked to commemorate the seventh day. Because Allah created the heavens and earth in six days. And you are commemorating the seventh day. But they had quarreling and disputes over how to commemorate the seventh day. And then Allah tells us in the day, so you are not allowed to walk on the seventh day. 
you can rest and you can pray. Mm. Go on the seventh day. Answer? There is no answer except, except in the recitation of the Quran. No answer you can get. Allah has divided the Quran to teach a lesson. Because when the seventh day comes and you're reciting the Quran, something strange happens on the seventh day. Two things on the seventh day. Remember on the sixth day, Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah al Araf. That is it? Yes. Six days. So which surah comes after Surah Al Araf? Come on, somebody. Al Fad is correct. So give him a can. Al Fad is correct. But something strange about Al Fad. What is it strange about Al Fad? It is short. It is short. All of these were long. But this one is short. Why? Huh? Allah sent the Quran to people who think. Ahmad Sokano should not be the only one who thinks. <laughs> Why? A surah to Anfal shot. Not only that, something else. Every surah of the Quran begins with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Except? Except? Which one? Except surah to Tawbah. Except Surah to Toba. If they are masses, they always can. You'd be very surprised if they are masses. Except Surah to Toba. So why is it that Adam Fan is shot? And the surah after that Fal is the only surah without Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. The question is, <coughs> why is an Anfal short? When all the previous surahs were long, six days of creation, six long surahs. And now on the seventh day, Alan Fahad is short, for the rest. and Tawbah does not have Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Why? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Professor. Go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> this is just my comment. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I will be just as the conclusion from the rest six of the of the six uh, first verses yes. before. So the seven one, the unfold as the conclusion. The seven one and two are short because this is the as the conclusion of the four. Well, the, the six. And what about Toba? Oh, why is Toba without Bismillah? Uh, you give me a correct answer, you get Makkah and Padang. Padang. Oh, God. Okay. Because Surah Al Tawba uh, tells about war. The answer is Allah has given us an unfold shot 
And even as Toba, we told this pillar. Continue from Anfa. Because he wants us to join. Continue from Anfa and Otoba. We combine Al Anfal and Toba as your Jews mm. for the seventh day. And when you combine Al Anfal and Toba as your Jews for the seventh day, this is how we commemorate the Sabbath. The six days of creation. Okay? All right. I have a book <coughs> entitled The Quran and the Moon. And I believe it is translated to Bahasa. Okay, but it seems as though everybody understands English. So you can get it from my website. Uh, Trust knows my website and read that book before Ramadan. <laughs> read that book before Ramadan. Trust will give you the website. You can download it. I believe we have it in Bahasa as well, but we have it in English. Okay. Um, I came to Moscow to attend the conference, the multi Polarity Conference on Monday and Tuesday. There must have been about a thousand people present. Yes. A huge auditorium uh, somewhere in Moscow, Fresno, the place. And a uh, hundred and thirty countries, including Indonesia. Yes, 130 countries present in that conference. And uh, the whole world of Islam, everybody present <laughs> in that conference. And uh, <coughs> they invited me to speak in the opening session of the conference uh, on multipolarity. And I went to the Quran. I only got about ten, 10 minutes, but I used the 10 minutes. And I went to Surah Al Hujurat of the Quran. Uh, in Surah Al Hujurat, Allah says that I created you from a male and a female. And I caused you to emerge as different nations and different tribes. <coughs> different nations, different tribes, multiplicity, diversity. <coughs> but the Jal wants us to all become one people, <laughs> one global society. <laughs> Everybody eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody eating the same food. <coughs> Everybody dressing the same way. Everybody with their <coughs> my phone. This um, this phone here. This is bringing all of mankind together yes. as yes. one global society. Yes. <laughs> yes. One global society. And uh, one people will rule over the whole world. That is called unique polarity. But Russia is saying no. We're not prepared to accept that. And China is saying, no, we're not prepared to accept unipolarity. We want multipolarity. So I, I, I went to the Quran to explain the reason why they want to rule the world. It's because they believe that they were created by Allah to rule the world. 
they believe that they are the chosen people of the Lord God. And this is in Surah Al Jum'ah. Ya ayyuhal, ya ayyuhal, what is it? Ya ayyuhal, 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 you believe that you are the chosen people of the Lord God to the exclusion of the rest of mankind. <coughs> Which is what they say here. The Torah said they are the chosen of the Lord God. They are born superior. For the man will <laughs> Then why don't you desire death? But they will not ever, ever do that because they know what sin they have committed. So we've identified this belief that you are born superior. You identify that you are born with a birthright of superiority. This is the root of unipolarity. Mm -hmm. And we have to <coughs> resist it. Our prophet said, Allah's blessing be upon him. He said, All of mankind will stand before Allah on judgment day as equal in his sight as are the teeth of a comb. Mm -hmm. Guess who in the conference got the hit, hit with that? Can you guess? The Hindu? Mm -hmm. The Hindu? <laughs> yes, there were Indian delegates, Hindus, mm -hmm. because they believed the Brahman, the Brahman, Brahman. The, is born Brahman. superior. He's <laughs> born with the birthright of superiority, like the Jew. The Brahman and the Jew had the same belief, birthright of superiority. <coughs> And in the second day of the conference, I spoke on Russia in the Quran. <coughs> what does the Quran say about Russia? You're working in the Indonesian mission and you're in Moscow. So long as you remain in Russia, you must be able to tell the Russian people what does the Quran say about Russia. And the first thing you will say to them is that the Quran says nothing, nothing at all about Russia if Russia is a European country. But now they are saying that Russia is Eurasian. Eurasian, Eurasian. Europe and Asia. Yes. So we say there is nothing in the Quran about Russia which is a Eurasian country. Nothing. But the Quran has plenty to say about Russia if Russia is Christian. <laughs> if Russia is primary identity is its faith, Christian faith, mm. then the Quran has much to say about Russia. Let us go to the first verse of the Quran on Russia. Sometimes when Allah speaks, His words are mm. like thunder, mm. very powerful, hard language. Let me give you an example. <laughs> in the sharra dawa, in Allah, the worst creatures with Allah 
إن الشر الدواب عند الله سم البكم الذين لا يعقلون The worst creatures with Allah are the deaf and the dumb who don't think. Who don't think. Huh? And they accept hadith that our prophet married a child. Yeah. That she was how old? Nine years. How old? Nine years. That's the six. Six. Our prophet? Yes. Married a child who is six. Six. You. Yeah? And you accept that? That is in conflict with the Quran. But that is also in conflict with elementary common sense <laughs> because none of you will marry a six-year-old child no. none 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 of you will give your daughter in marriage at the age of six none none of you none of you none but yet you say he married a six-year-old you don't have sense in your head so sometimes when Allah speaks his words are like thunder. And sometimes when he speaks, his words fall like gentle raindrops. Mm -hmm. So when in the same ayah there is thunder and also raindrops, then we must pay attention. Something special here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. huh? And this verse is in Surah Al Ma'ida. And Allah says that you will most certainly find at the time when the Quran was revealed, as well as in time to come, that those who will have the greatest hatred for you would be the Jews and Yahud. Latatidanna ashadda nasi adawatan lilladhina amanu al-Yahud, the Jews. So we ask, is this anti-Semitism? <laughs> Are you going to really? Put a child and ban the Quran. <laughs> Come on. This is what Allah is saying. Walladina Ashraku. In addition to the Jews, <coughs> there's another great enemy of yours. Great enemy of yours. Mm. A people in Shirk. Who is the Quran addressing? <coughs> Who is the Quran addressing? When he speaks of a people in shirk, believe more on God. Answer? Believe more on God. Answer? The Christian says that there is God the Father <laughs> and also God the Son and also God the Holy Spirit, Trinity. Trinity. But the Christian says we worship one God. Yes, we worship one God. But that one God has three persons in the one God, <coughs> the Trinity. But there is a difference between the Christians one part of the Christian world says the Holy Spirit comes only from the Father and not from the Son. Another part of the Christian world says the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. 
This is the shirk. This is the shirk that Allah is speaking about. These people who say the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. These will be the most hostile of all people to you, in addition to the Jews. And who are they? It is the Christians of the West. This was 1054, when they broke away from Constantinople, Western Christianity. And Western Christianity said, the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. And it is Western Christianity, the Western world, which is waging war on Muslims. They hate Muslims. Yeah. They hate Muslims. A family in <coughs> Sweden, Swedish men, married an Egyptian girl. He is Muslim, she is Muslim. They are my students. <coughs> they have four lovely children. And they live in Sweden and they are trying to bring up the children as Muslims. So they don't want to send the children to school. They are teaching the children at home. The government of Sweden forcing them, forcing them, they want the children. And because the family resisting and resisting, the government seized all four children. The children are probably now eating pork. Lachmuk <laughs> indeed. Yeah. And the Swedish government very happy. When the mother and the father attempt now to try to publicize the case, and they turn to me, they put it on my website, they put it on my YouTube channel and so on. The Swedish government now, because the wife is not Swedish, she has a Canadian passport, but she's from Egypt, and they've expelled her from Sweden. They took the children and they expelled the wife. <laughs> the wife was sent back to Canada. So the husband said to the wife, go to Trinidad, go to Sheikh Imran's home. So she arrived in my home. I was not there, I was in Moscow. And my wife was treated and kept her in the home and protecting her. This is what the Swedish government has done. This is the hatred they have, the hostility they have for Islam. And uh, Allah is saying in this verse of Surah to uh, Maida, you will most certainly find that those who have the greatest hatred for you will be the Jews and these people who commit shit. That's the thunder. And now come the raindrops. <coughs> and you will most certainly find that those who are closest in love and affection for you would be, it doesn't say would be a Christian people, no. It says would be a people who say we are Christians. In uh, Nasara, meaning they have no fear of mm. proclaiming their identity as Christians. Mm. Whereas the Frenchman will say, I am French. The Englishman will say, I'm English. The American will say, I'm it's nationalism. But these people don't say, I'm French, I'm English, I'm German. They say, I'm Christian. And, Christian. and these Christians will be closest in love and affection for you. Who are those Christians? Zalika bi anna minhum kisisin. 
وَرُحْبَانًا وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ The reason why they will be closest in love and affection for you is because, number one, they have the institution of the priesthood in that. The priest still has a role, significant role to play in society. <clears throat> Number two, they have the institution of monasticism, the monastery. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, Trust took me to the main <coughs> monastery in Moscow. Yeah. And thirdly, because these Christians, they are not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. Those Christians in the West, they want to rule the world, but not these Christians. So we ask, which Christians are these? Look at it right here. Right here. I attended this conference. I'm a scholar of Islam. And they put me on the platform in the opening session to speak. Could this happen in Washington? Could this happen in London or Paris? <laughs> it happened here in Moscow. Okay. And then when the conference is over, a small group, about a dozen, just a little more than one dozen, we were invited <coughs> to have dinner with the foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. And Lavrov came, the foreign minister came, and sat down with us for two hours. Two hours. It was a long table, and the minister is sitting at the center on one side. Opposite him is Alexander Dugin. Okay. And next to Alexander Dugin, I am sitting. Huh? And each one of us is allowed to engage the minister. And I got my turn, and I got a lot of time with the minister. And I'm telling the minister the importance that the Russia is in the Quran. Mm. He said he doesn't know. And the minister said to me, could you write a summary mm. of what the Quran says about Russia and what the prophet said and send it to me? Mm. Would a, an American Secretary of State ever say that? Would a British Foreign Secretary ever say that? A French Foreign Minister? Not even a Pakistani Foreign Minister would do that. And the Russian Foreign Minister has asked me to write for him about Russia in the Quran. So here is the evidence. Now when Allah says there will be a Christian people who will be closest in love and affection for you. He's speaking about the Orthodox Christian world which is led by Russia. I've given you one verse of the Quran. I can give you many, many more. But this is enough for today. Yeah. Any questions? So, yes. <laughs> uh, Any question, Mr. Fadil? Yes, go ahead. <coughs> Is it close but, but, but because I can't hear you. But there is a basic uh, a fundamental, fundamental uh, difference between Islam and Christianity, as you said before. Christianity, even in Russia, they still believe in Trinity. So how you uh, explain? Okay. It? Yes. But still, Good point. Still, still, yeah. There is a big problem between us and it's the Trinity. Surah the room of the Quran. Okay? And it is revealed <laughs> in the lifetime of the Prophet. So this is 600 years after Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Okay? Right? 
and this is 300 years after the Council of Nicaea established the Trinity. 300 years after the Trinity was established, the Quran was revealed. <clears throat> and in Surah to uh, Rome, this is what Allah says. Alif Lam Mim. Go to Rome. Rome has been defeated. Who is Rome? Answer Constantinople. Constantinople, okay? At that time, the split had not yet taken place. The West had not broken away from Constantinople, Rome. No. So Constantinople was defeated. Who defeated? The Persian Empire. <coughs> Go over to Rome. But Allah says, even though they were defeated, I am telling you that they will now be victorious. And this victory will come to Rome within a few years. And this victory will be no, Rome has been defeated in a land close by. Okay? So you're not Chicago. <laughs> Rome has been defeated in a land close by. But after this defeat, Rome is going to be victorious. Within a few years. Lillahi al Amr. Rome will be victorious because Allah is the one who controls power. Ordain. Who will be victorious? Lillahi al Amr. Min kabla wa min bad. Twice. Will Rome be victorious? Both before and after. Binasrillah, they will vict Rome will be victorious because Allah will help them. Binasrillah. And Allah helps whomsoever Allah decides to help. This is the Quran. وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَحُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And on that day when Rome is victorious, you Muslims will celebrate, including Mount Nabi Muhammad. But my question, <coughs> the Rome that Allah helped to be victorious, did that room believe in the Trinity? Come and answer me. The best the room, I think the <coughs> successor of the Constantinople. My question to you is, the Byzantine Empire, which is in Constantinople, which is room of the Quran, did that Byzantine Empire believe in the Trinity, yes or no? <laughs> You're afraid to answer. You're afraid to answer. Yes, because You're afraid to answer. The answer is, and you cannot escape. There's no way to escape. The Byzantine Empire had accepted the Trinity 300 years earlier. Rome believed in the Trinity. And despite the fact that Rome believed in the Trinity, 
Allah had them. And they were victorious. And when they were victorious, we celebrated. And Nabi Muhammad also celebrated. I explained to me how, how could Allah help a people who believe in the Trinity? Answer, answer. Uh, they say that the Holy Spirit comes only from the Father and not from the Son. By, uh, by holding on to this Spirit, they are de facto actually believing in the Father as <laughs> Because the Holy Spirit does not come from the Son. It comes from only the Father. But these on the other side, they say the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. So Allah will not help them, not this side. That side, yes, not this side. Okay, any other question? Okay. Yes, Krasna. Conti continuing from your explanation, so the logic it will be like this. It means that we as a Muslim, not a single Ummah that guarantee for the heaven. The other Ummah is Islam also before us. Can you when explain that? Nabi, until the return of Nabi Isa, mm -hmm. Al -Islam, mm -hmm. we have to use wisdom, wisdom. Mm -hmm in reaching out to them to teach them the Quran. Okay? There are many Christians today having listened to me now say we believe that the Quran is the word of the one God. And as soon as they say that, our people jump up, take the shahada, take the shahada, take the shahada. This is all we, this is all the sense we have in our head. Tell me, this is the nonsense we have. You spent 600 years, you could not get them to believe the Quran is the word of God. You could never do it. And I have come and preached to them and now they say we believe the Quan is the word of God. Are you jumping up? Tell me, you don't have any sense in your head? No, no, no. You can't go to heaven if you're a Christian. You have to join this Ummah in order to go to heaven. This is the nonsense we have. So you have, when the Bisha Islam returns, all of them will believe, all, that the Quran is the word of God. And they will give up the Trinity. All of them. But now it is already happening. Yes. They are, just go to my YouTube channel and you see how many Christians are there. And they say, we accept that Muhammad is the prophet. And we accept the Quran is the word of God. And these Idiots, take the shahada, take the shahada. I don't know what to do with them. No, these people want to continue to follow Jesus. They don't want to join this woman. And I say to them, by all means, you can continue to follow Jesus. Now that you accept the Quran and you accept Muhammad as a prophet, mashallah, you make great progress. Any more questions? Sorry. Yes, right. Islam is mean that submit to God, right? So before us, before our community of Islam, long time ago, from Nabi Ibrahim, they have their own community with their own Sharia and their own path and their own milah, right? So it means that we belong the continuation of that long tradition of Islam, and we have just like a final bricks of this ummah. What is it? Why how is this explain that? Yeah, yeah. There is a verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah that is very, very important for this subject. You have to study that verse, okay? <coughs> Allah says, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرَعَةً وَمِنْ هَاجَةً 
ولو شاء الله لجعلكم أمة واحدة ولكن ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم فاستبقوا الخيرات إلى الله مرجعكم جميعا وينبئكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون There is one deen with Allah, only one deen, not two. And that deen is Islam. But that deen did not come to the world for the first time with Nabi Muhammad, mm -hmm. and Islam. That is the same deen which has come with every prophet of Allah. <coughs> every prophet of Allah. But in the one deen, There are several ummas. <laughs> yes. Every prophet has an ummah. And some of the prophets also brought a new sharia, O oh Lord. Hmm? And the beast, he said, I didn't come with any new law. The, the Sharia which came to Nabi Musa is the same Sharia of Nabi Isa Islam. Yes, he has a new kitab, the Injil, but the Sharia is the same. Good? So now, when Nabi Isa Islam returns, who is he coming back to? <coughs> Did he come into this Ummah? Mm -hmm. What does Allah say in the Quran? To whom is Nabi Isa Islam sent? Answer? These people. Mm -hmm. Rasulan ila Bani Israel. <laughs> ya Bani Israel, inni <clears throat> Rasulullahi ilaykum. I am the messenger of Allah <coughs> sent to you. Has Allah changed that? So when he comes back, he's coming to anybody else? <laughs> Is there any evidence that Allah has changed that? Where's the evidence? There's no evidence that Allah has changed that. So when he comes back, He's not coming to this Ummah. This Ummah will have Imam al-Mahdi. That is our Amir. <laughs> And he is coming back to Banu Israel. Okay? But because Allah taught him the Quran, Allah did not teach Imam al-Mahdi the Quran. Allah taught They don't like this in Iran. <laughs> the Iranians don't like to hear this at all. Allah says in the Quran, He taught Nabi Isa Islam the Quran. But He didn't teach Imam al Mahdi. So when Nabi Isa Islam returns, He's returning to His Ummah. But He will be a teacher for us. And He will be a A, a guide for us and a law lawgiver to make legal decisions like a mufti, like a kalkali. But our Amir is not Nabi Isa. Our Amir is the Imam al Mahdi. So he will have his Ummah and we will have our Ummah. Any other questions or shall we call it toilet a day now? different branches, they're divided. And uh, the Coptic Christians in Egypt are Orthodox. Uh, the Christians in Abyssinia, in Ethiopia, very old Christians, uh, are also Orthodox. The Christians in Syria are Orthodox. The Christians in the Balkans are Orthodox. The Christians in Moscow are Orthodox. When the Second World War was taking place, there was an alliance between Stalin and Churchill and Roosevelt. 
and Hitler was defeated. Germany had surrendered. The war should have been over. But Churchill and Roosevelt asked Stalin to continue the war. <laughs> because they wanted the Soviet Union, which was a godless state, an atheist state, to take control of the whole Orthodox Christian world. And that is why the Second World War continued, even after Germany had defeated, surrendered. It was war that the West was waging on the Orthodox Christian world. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a book, press, about Britain and Russia. They hate Russia. Mm -hmm. They hate Russia. They despise Russia. They will be waging endless wars on Russia. That's the West. Mm -hmm. And so why would the Ottoman Empire also do it? The Ottoman Empire waged war on Russia for 600 years. Answer? Because the Ottoman Empire was also working for Dajjal. Yes. Nobody has said that in Indonesia. Yes. Indonesia don't know that. The Ottoman Empire was working on behalf of Dajjal mm -hmm. and fighting against the Orthodox Christian to sabotage friendship and alliance between Muslims and Orthodox Christians in the end time. Mm -hmm. But despite the Ottoman Empire, look at what has happened. Lavrov has said to me, write for me and send it to me, what does the Quran say about Russia? Tell the Ottoman Empire, put, take that, put it in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> All right, enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>